You know what I really can't stand? First world parents that raise entitled first world children. Now, of course, I'm going to sound a bit like a hypocrite here for a second because I'm going to basically talk about an experience that happened today. I was basically listening to a CD of a band that from the 80s, a classic rock band. I'm not going to mention the name for obvious reasons, but in the fact that it's also completely irrelevant. But I was listening to my music, I was trying to. It's a college campus, we have a CD player, we have perfect right to basically do so. And these high schoolers basically came up, kids between, I would say, the ages of about 15, 16, somewhere along in there, typically the age of 14 to 18 years old. But I would say about 15, 16 years old and proceeded to continue to overstep their bounds and con and thought that they had some sort of privilege to not have to listen to this or some privilege of not having to even ask somebody if they can turn it off. Did not go to any authority, did not go asking anybody that worked in the cafeteria, did not, you know, ask, you know, whose music that possibly was, just proceeded to continue to turn off the music simply because they did not like it. I confronted them because obviously it's my music, it's my property. It, I bought it, it's I own I, I own the C D itself. I own you know, I own that copy of the C D. I don't own the intellectual copyright or the music in it, but I own the copy of that C D because I went out and bought it with my own money. Now I confronted these people on at least once or twice. I basically on the final occasion informed them that this is my this is my music that could they please refrain from turning it off or turning it down because this is for the enjoyment of anybody that wants to listen to it and if they don't like it they don't necessarily have to be there and listen to it. And somehow they thought somehow I'm forcing it down their throat, which is completely ridiculous. So essentially what ends up happening is that these individuals take it upon themselves to not only pull the plug on the music, but take it the, take the CD and throw it in the trash. Again, these individuals did not have the respect to even come up and ask me if it was, you know, if it was okay to turn off my music they did ask me to turn it down to which I told them no because at that point they had already escalated it to a situation where I wasn't going to have it but so basically in retaliation they threw it in the trash which to me signals a, a very sharp response that this is that they think that my music is trash and that basically this is a way to get at me to essentially you know, show me what it, you know, and stuff like that, which, you know, is completely immature, and I'm going to be honest, I, I'll, you know, everybody had a part to play in this, but essentially, it was the fact that at first, I thought they had stolen my property, I thought they had stolen my, my copy of the CD, and I went through the proper channels to basically, um, I went through the proper channels, I filed an incident report to which I later, um, to which I actually went back because, you know, one, I don't want to be liable for any legal issues later, so I uh, canceled the incident, re I, I yeah, told them to, to throw out the incident report that I previously had made, and basically had made sure that I went through the proper channels to let them know that I have properly found the CD and where it was. So, essentially where I'm going with this long, rambling rant is that I really think, is that I'm going to sound now like an old man. These kids, it seems like kids today, the, the kids that grow up in the first world today, you know, particularly the young teenagers of today, don't really seem to have the respect 
that my generation has or that the generation even before me has and let alone the generation before that they don't seem to have that level of respect for other people's you know for, for the other people's authority for other people's property for other pe for anything really other than uh, but them their own material and self-righteous selves and I think a lot of this has to play into... Now, of course, I'm playing right into the idea of materialism, and we're going to... So that's why I said I'm going to sound a bit like a hypocrite. But in my opinion, it's kind of one of those things where it, it's this whole idea of this first world privilege mentality. And yes, this is a first world problem, and I acknowledge that. But at the same time, it's the fact that the because of these first world the, this first world problem would not even be an issue if there was not this overwhelming level of first world privilege and this is the one big problem is that there's such a we live in a time of, of consumer capitalism and we have ever since the 1920s but we live in a, in, in a very consumerist materialistic sort of uh, way of life and we are very privileged to live in the position that we do and with all acknowledgments from off the backbone and benefit from imperialism but it's the problem with the growing number of kids today that are very bourgeois reactionary and you know think oh we're so rebellious we're so you know we're going to be the next generation to do this and blah 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 we're the next group of revolutionaries we're the next group of this and no, it's just the same old cycle. It's the petty teenage drama and bullcrap and immaturity that I had when I was their age. And the same bullcrap immaturity that my parents had and that my grandparents had and, and so on. It was, it's the same thing. It's just the level of materialism and consumerism and outright just bourgeois, you know, reactionary first world privilege that continues to grow and one of the biggest problems is the way the very I would say the very liberal aspect that the lack of discipline that children these days are given they're allowed to run amok and do all kinds of be and basically do all kinds of BS with very little if any sort of consequence they're either given some sort you know they're either taken taken to therapy or they're put on some sort of you know some sort of prescription meds for behavioral issues when really I personally think that these kids just simply need some discipline I'm not saying crack them upside the head or whoop their ass or anything like that but I do believe that some sort of correctional behavior needs to happen something needs to be taken away there has to be some sort of consequence don't just feed them pills and feed them junk food or take them to therapy Though for some it actually that can be partially a benefit, but it does not necessarily solve the the issue itself, and that's the problem of this bourgeois privilege that we we have in the first world. Because you don't really see this kind of an issue going on in the third world. You don't because there isn't that materialism and there isn't that petty consumerism. You know, at least not to the extent that we have in the West. And I really think that a lot of this has to also do with the parenting styles as well as the society and the, the privilege that we have in the West. So that's what I'm really getting at here, is that we really have this sense where we need to reevaluate where we are in society and that do we really want the next generation who's going to grow up and basically have these, this warped sense of what the world's like having children and passing on these warped values to their children and have the next generations be worse are we really prepared to go that that bouge, that very lenient liberal route it, it's you know because let's be honest the consumerism is not going to just go away and it's certainly not going to go away overnight if we don't do something you know it, it's not going to do anything if we don't fight it and it's not going to go away overnight the materialism is not going to go away overnight. And the privilege, fuck, 
the privilege isn't even going to go away or, and go or go away overnight. You know, we have to fight in order to better ourselves, and we have to. And sometimes that's taking a step back, or at least taking a look back and re-examining the way that we discipline children and gaining some sort of respect back in our society. So, again, I may sound like a hypocritical old man, you know, at 24 years old, and sometimes, believe me, I feel like I'm 24 going on 70, but I just needed to let that off my chest because that was personally a view of mine that I kind of came across kind of thinking it over after the little incident I had today. So, and not only that, it's a college campus, grow up, and you're in a big boy game, and you have no, and because you're on a college campus and you're a high school student, you don't have the right to basically do what you did. I'm sorry, that's just not the way the world works. Anyway, I'm Norkel Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. Just letting off a little rant. This has been Norkel Corner. Later.